Hey, 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 good morning, y'all. Listen, I just realized as soon as I hit the button, let me get my um, instrumental going in the background. Come on, thing, wake up. I'm going to wake this so it can take her tablet up. It's, uh, it's old and slow. It's the only one in the house. <laughs> I wasn't very prepared, was I? No, because I'm just dragging up behind this morning and just spur the moment, just, okay, let me hit the button. Good morning, cuz. <laughs> um, so yeah, happy Thursday, y'all, September 28th. <sighs> September 28th. Huh. Huh. There's some significance to today. It'll come to me sooner or later. Divine Solutions, Isaiah 14, 27. The Lord Yahweh, the commander of angel armies, has an amazing strategy. And who can thwart him? Who? 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 Tell me who. When he moves in power, who can stop him? When he moves in power, who can stop him? Absolutely nobody. And we've got to get a hold of that. We've got to get a hold of that. We don't have a hold of that. We say it. We want to believe it, especially when we're feeling all, you know, holier than thou or whatever the case, when we're feeling all empowered. You see a mess they made in the living room. Anyway, but do we really, when it's time to walk it out, when it's time to go against the grain, when it's time to turn around and swim upstream, do we really believe and remember and recognize and realize and behave like we believe that the word is true. Well, I didn't do a very good job with that um, distraction over here. These cats are at it. Anyways, um, you know, do we really, do we really believe it? Lord, help our unbelief. So Yahweh, as I get heavenly vision for what you are wanting to release into the world and into specific situations, I bring your solutions with me into my life. See, that's that part, that part, you know, actually, actually walking it out, actually applying it, applying what you've learned. What good is that knowledge if it just stays in your head? You know, all that does is make you know better, but still not doing better. So it, it, it brings about your guilt. It brings about your punishment if you don't act on it. Those that know better should do better. That's not quoted directly, but it's in there. Um, the one who knows to do right and does not, for him that is sin. That is a little more direct of a quote. Anyways, don't ask me the address. But it is a chapter and it is a verse in the Word. So, I bring your solutions with me into my life. The Word of God is written on my heart that I might not sin against him. The word is written on my heart that it might be what flows out of my mouth. That you know that the abundance of the heart is where the words of your mouth come from. Let that be the word of God, the truth. Um, you can't come up with anything good to say on your own. You can't do it. Stop wasting your time and be filled with the Lord. Be filled with His word and let it come out. So I, as I intercede upon an open heaven. My heart cry joins with the wisdom of your word and releases answers. And it does, y'all. It does, y'all. It does. I was just witnessing um, the other day about how so often in prayer, God answers my prayer through my mouth, into my ears. You know, he really resonates it with me by giving me the words as I'm seeking them, as I'm talking it out with them. He literally answers me with my tongue he is yes he's that big he's that amazing who can stop him who can stop him because i am united to you i have access before your throne at all times thank you thank you thank you with boldness we can enter in y'all the blood of jesus made that possible the veil is torn 
the veil is torn. We don't have to send that priest with the rope on his leg anymore. We can just go. We can just go in Jesus' name. Do we have to say, I come in the name of Jesus? No, the Lord knows his people. He recognizes Jesus all over us. He sees the blood when he looks at us. He sees the righteousness of his beloved son. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Stop walking around here wallowing um, and, and, you know, wanting to hold on so bad to that sinful nature. Oh, I'm just an old sinner. I'm only human. Pitiful. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm united to you and I have access before your throne at all times. No excuses, y'all. No excuses. No excuses. Open heaven. Because he's given us the keys to the kingdom. Because he's given us the power to bind on earth what is bound in heaven. To loose on earth what is loose in heaven. In the heavenly realms. In the unseen realm. The spirit. We have that power in Jesus Christ. And you can't tell me that we're walking around in it like we should be. Uh -uh. Okay, they're on one this morning. Anyway. I come through the open door of Christ, climbing up and down the stairway of Jesus in intercession. Remember we talked about Jesus' stairway the other day, because I was like, hmm, that's an interesting uh, phrase there. And indeed it is beyond interesting. So, I will cry out for your intervention until the promise descends. Be that persistent widow. But you're not crying out to the unrighteous judge that's just going to get sick of hearing your voice. No, you're crying out to the righteous one that knows even better what you need and what you're really crying out for in the Spirit than you do. He's just going to honor your faithfulness in coming to Him and coming to His feet and answer in His time perfectly. It says, I will cry out until the promise descends. I will not rest in prayer until I feel the shift in the spirit realm. Put your power and glory on display through wonders and miracle answers. And he does. He does. Y'all, we're so used to miracles, we don't even recognize them when we're face to face with them. Do we realize that? Do we realize that as we look around? Just even think of, of how um, technology's evolved over the years. How people just look, just look at history. Look at the revolving and, and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Y'all know I'll never bring my dictionary and I always need it. I don't even have one. I'm just saying. Google. Um, but yeah, in that sense, evolution. Um, not that, not that, not that junk. He even renounce that on his deathbed, y'all. Come on, not that junk. But the evolving, the growth, the growth that we've experienced as as a world, as a nation, as people. Um, just look around. But yet at the same time, to our detriment, because we're so darn smart, we can't even, you know, walk to get somewhere and keep our body in shape. We gotta drive there and save time and do this and do that, you know. All these conveniences is real I've really been hung up up on that lately too. I just went, I don't know, I'm in left field, y'all give me a minute. All the conveniences that we're so smart, right? Thinking ourselves wise, we have become fools because all these conveniences that appear so smart, so wise, give us so much more time, keep us in touch with people around the world. Um you know, make this easier and that lighter and that quicker. What are they doing to our physical uh, strength? What are they doing to our mental strength, our emotional? What are they doing to us? Um, you know, cancer, diabetes, obesity, all these things, sicknesses, um, mental disorders that come about from all these conveniences, all this spoiling that we've done to our, it, it, come on. But we think ourselves so wise, so wise that we don't have to, you know, hike here or whatever anymore. Transportation's been a big one for me because of how the enemy is turning it against us um, with the electric, non you know, all the nonsense, all the things. 
Um, anyways, too much of anything. Let's say too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Too much of anything is too much. <laughs> too much of anything is too much. Because we don't have the discipline. See, that was the thing that we were supposed to be feeding and building and growing stronger. Was in the spirit. Not out here in the natural where it's going to burn up. Literally, wow, Lord, wow. Literally for centuries, we have been so disobedient in that. And we look around and think that that's the miracles. We look around and think that the handiwork that we've come up with, because of the knowledge and the intelligence he's given us, is miraculous. When in fact, when in fact, we've just built an entire system, an entire infrastructure that is going to burn and we've let the spiritual, we've let the souls perish. We, wow. This is, hmm. No. Think of it. Think of it. He just took me to a whole nother scale with that. About laying up treasures. Laying up treasures. And we've made this world a place so full of treasures that our flesh so longs for, so craves that it's willing to forfeit the creator of all for. It's willing. Our flesh is willing. The enemy's more than partnered up with our flesh in this destruction of our very souls. And we call it prosperity. We call it good. Not just not just the obvious evils of sin, not just the obvious evils of those that won't inherit the kingdom, the adulterers and idolaters and witchcraft and, you know, on and on and on. Um, and even those that hate and even those that judge and even those who um, are corrupt, you know, in their thoughts and such. You know, go, go, read, <laughs> go read that. That's not where I'm going exactly. But, you know, we focus on that. But look at the big picture of the treasures that we've laid up as a whole, co corporately. Wow. 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 I gotta get, whoo, I gotta dig deeper to that. Let's finish this prayer. Man, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Yeshua. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. You're the only one who can. Open our eyes. Those that have eyes to see, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. It's not about all this junk that your eyes can behold in the natural. It never was. And we've wasted centuries making it about that, building up these treasures, laying up these treasures on earth. They're steadily crumbling. Um, you know, we look at, at the past generation, um, the, the ruins all around us becoming rubble, it's becoming dust, it's becoming, you know, um, dilapidated and junk. But it was somebody's treasure once. They're gone from this realm. And that's what's left. And yet we build it and do it all over again for ourselves. Like stop the stop the madness cycle and let me off. I want to get on board with the Lord. Come on. Wow. Divine Solutions. Did I even say that that was the title today? Because, listen, he's taken us there this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He's so good, y'all. Mmm, taste and see. Taste and see. Mmm. That was a whole revelation. I don't even know how to act now. I don't even know how to act now. So, I will cry out for your intervention until the promise descends. I will, Lord. You know I will. You know I will. He sees the intents of the heart, y'all. He sees beyond what y'all see. He sees beyond what I see in you to the core. There's absolutely nothing. No thought you can hide. No imagination you can hide from him. He made you. Certainly, certainly he can read you. Come on. So, I know, I know, like, he just overwhelmed me this morning. I will not rest in prayer 
until I feel the shift in the spirit realm. And that was one of them. That was one of them just then, just now today, y'all. I hope y'all felt it too. Put your power and glory on display through wonders and miracle answers. What is natural becomes supernatural when your spirit does what only you can do, Lord. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I was talking about running around saying I'm just an old sinner. Running around saying I'm only human. Listen, I want to grab some folks and shake them sometimes with that all the time. Well, here's my excuse, remember, because I told you last time it was the same excuse for the same stupid thing that I did on the same, uh, over and over, stuck in that rut, stuck in that rut, and the enemy's laughing, the enemy's laughing, God is crying out to you through those who will open their mouth and give it to him and surrender and let him, and let him speak his word through it, and you're just, but you're only human. You don't want to see past that wall that the enemy's built around you. That you've helped him build. Listen, you helped him build it. You gave him brick after brick to throw on that sucker. Um, trying to satisfy your flesh. Trying to appease yourself. When the Bible clearly tells you to deny that self. Deny it. Deny it. The heart is deceitful. Anyways. I guess there, Lord. I don't even know. Put your power and glory on display through wonders and miracle answers. I keep jumping around, excited, trying to find my place. Oh, that's what I, I didn't even finish my thought about I'm only human. Listen, what is natural that only a human becomes supernatural when your spirit does what only you can do, Lord. Your spirit, his spirit in us, we are that temple. Listen, no only human is a temple of the living God. Come on up where he's at and be more. Do what he Ah, oh, get a grasp on what he's got for you. Be set apart. Be set apart. And then you let people say, Well, you're judging me. Well you're you're not you're not all that. I think you're holier than thou, yada yada shmada. Listen, the word tells me that the one full of his spirit is holier than the one that is not. The word tells me, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Um, don't be afraid of what people say about you. Don't work so hard trying to be only human to satisfy the only humans. Get up. Get up. Get up, bride. Your groom is on his way. Get up. Oh, kitty, but I say Lord, I say it. I something. God is doing something this morning, y'all. Oh, but God is doing something this morning. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Rest on us. God, have your way. What is natural becomes supernatural when your spirit does what only you can do. You make wrong things right. Redirect steps and foil the plans of the enemy. You do it and I get to partner with you. I love being your prayer partner in life, Lord. Move, Lord. Move, Lord. In the intercession that I bring and do more than I could even imagine to ask you for. Move in the intercession I bring. That's what I was talking about. We don't even we don't know what to pray. That's why the prayer life, which is also so vital, because we don't know what to pray. You can pray the word most certainly. Indeed, do so. Do so often and much and more. But show up. Show up and be yielded. Be completely surrendered. And y'all know, my, here goes my disclaimer, I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to me too. I've just said, Lord, use my lips. Cleanse me. I'm a man of unclean lips. <laughs> but you, when you get involved, when your spirit gets involved, the supernatural, the natural becomes supernatural. And it, I mean, hey, that wasn't the word, that was the prayer, uh, prayer book. But he knows what he's talking about, let me tell you that. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my goodness. Y'all. Okay, Hebrews, is this where we need... Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is this where we need to be this morning? And I'm pretty sure it is because my heading for Hebrews chapter 5, I could just almost jump up right now, is a king priest like Melchizedek. A king priest like Melchizedek. Come on, somebody. For every high priest 
was chosen from among the people and appointed to represent them before God by presenting their gifts to God and offering sacrifices on their behalf. Since the high priest is only one who is clothed in weakness, he humbles himself by showing compassion to those who are ignorant of God's ways and stray from them. And for this reason, he is not, he has to not only represent, I'm sorry, well, hold on, I'm putting stuff that's not there. And for this reason, he has to not only present the sin offering of others, but also to bring a sin offering for himself. This is the high priest. In the order of Melchizedek. This is the Old Covenant high priest that he's describing to you to make you understand how Jesus became the last one we'd ever need in all his perfection, in all his splendor, in all his glory, in the perfect plan of God from the foundations of the earth. Oh, God, help us. Help us, Lord, to so it up this morning. So no one takes this honor upon himself by being self-appointed. Oh, catch that, mega churches. Catch that. Catch that, heresy hunters. Catch that, all of you. Oh my goodness, with three or four titles before your name and, and a bunch of initials after. Catch this. No one takes this honor upon himself by being self-appointed, but God is the one who calls each one, just as Aaron was called. So also, Christ was not self-appointed, and did not glorify himself by becoming high priest, but God called and glorified him. For the Father said to him, You are my favored son, today I have fathered you. Today I have fathered you. Every day I beget you. Because I am. This is ongoing. He's outside of time. He's outside of the past, uh, present, and future. It's all in his hands. Just that. Mm, mm. Teach me, Father. Teach me, Father. Teach me, Father. Mm, Jesus. Mm. Adonai. El Shaddai. Most precious. He just... Thank you, God. You are my father's son. Today I have fathered you. And in another scripture, he says about this new priestly order. You are a priest like Melchizedek, a king priest forever. Like him in that you offered that sacrifice for all the people. But forever because you are the Messiah without flaw. The perfect Lamb of God. The once and for all solution for every problem, for every question, for every doubt, for every fear, for every darkness. He is the light. During Christ's days on earth, he pleaded with God, praying with passion and with tearful agony that God would spare him from death. Because of his perfect devotion, his prayer was answered and he was delivered. Even though he was a wonderful son, he learned to listen and obey through all his suffering. And after being proven perfect in this way, he has now become the source of eternal salvation to all those who listen to him and obey. I love so much that that, let me check, oh shoot, well here's, what's this version? Oh, this is NIV, it, NIV. We're gonna, we're gonna see, I don't have my King Chain, King, King Chain, <laughs> King James within reach. But I'm going to see what NIV says in that. I love that he didn't say believe. He said those who listen to him and obey. Because, hello, because, hello. That's where it's at, y'all. That's the ones. That's the ones. Yes, he loves us all. He loves those who, who are burning for eternity, too. Mm. Hebrews 5. Oh, excuse me. I would agree if it was just right there. Okay, Hebrews 5.9. 5, 9. 5 9. I just want to get a different different wording for it. Um, Y'all know how I do. And once 
made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Okay, so it's it's not just his sake, it's 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 sort and that's why you gotta take the whole package. You can't just pick that one verse and hang from it, dangle from it, or try to let it dangle from you and not take on the whole word, not get the whole revelation, not seek God, not get filled with this spirit that will lead you into all understanding and all truth. Because even the devils believe and they tremble in fear. Even they have sense enough to tremble in fear. Some of us don't even do that. Where's our fear of the Lord? That's the beginning of all wisdom. I, another one I always end up going back to. But anyway, let's carry on. Even though he was a wonderful... Wait, no, that's not where I was. For God has de designated him as the king priest who is over the priestly order of Melchizedek. Jesus, our magnificent king priest, has made us kings and priests that serve him and extend his kingdom on the earth. Why? Because we're co-heirs with he is in, in Christ. You have this perfect brother who came to save the world. You have this Messiah as your brother, as close as a brother. Do y'all hear me though? Do y'all hear me though? This is transforming power. This is not just, oh, yeah, I'll go to heaven one day, but I'm just an old sinner here power. This is transforming next level. Get up and, and act like you know power. Come on. Come on. I feel like it's like gladiators mount up. It is time. It is time. Oh, it is time. He has designated him king priest who is over the priestly order of Melchizedek. We have much to say about this topic, although it is difficult to explain because you have to become too dull and sluggish. Oh, I'm sorry, not you have to. Because you have, oh, preach. Oh, my goodness. Did Paul write Hebrews? Hebrews, Hebrews is the one we're not sure who wrote. Let me flip back over here for a second. Just so I can say, preach, Paul, like I always do. I'm so silly. Um, unknown, but possibly Paul, Barnabas, Apollos, or Priscilla is what this tells us about the author. We have so much to say about this topic, but it's difficult to explain because you are too dull and sluggish to understand. You don't care. You're wrapped up in the things of this world and all that treasure that's going to burn that you don't even want to take the time to hear the truth that's going to set you free for an eternity, for the eternity of all eternities, for infinity but you'd rather hold on to this little this little stuff here this pleasure of the flesh this bleeding pleasure mm, Lord God my mouth is yours Lord may only your words flow from it for your truth for your glory God be glorified in me I am yours to command, Lord God, Most High, Yahweh, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jehovah, Sid Kenu, my righteousness. Mm, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. You've become too dull and sluggish to understand. For you should already be professors instructing others by now, but instead you need to be taught from the beginning the basics of God's prophetic oracles. You keep wanting to start over because you're not walking in the power. You're not getting that. You're not letting go of that dignity and that pride and, oh, it's got to be this way and it's got to look so and so, all that outward. You're not letting go of that. That's stuff that, that's got to be cleansed, purged, removed. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want this eternity with this perfect God? How bad do you want it? And it begins now. It doesn't begin then. It begins now. It Now is the day of salvation. It doesn't begin when I die. It doesn't begin when he calls me home. It, it begins now. You become a citizen of heaven. Born again. 
removed, set apart from this world. You're in the world. You're not of the world. Get a grip on these things. These things are literal. These things are detrimental. Detri no, detrimental. Well, it is if you don't get a grip on it, but that's not what I meant. These things are vital. These things are necessary. We treat them like there's, oh, that's for those radical ones. That's for those holy rollers. You know, I just, I'm simple. I'm too simple for that. I just, I just need, you know, I just need his love and his peace. I just, I just want to go to heaven, but I want to live like hell on earth. Tell the truth. Go ahead and say it like it is. Because he sees with what's in your heart anyway. So go ahead and say that. And then get in this word and find out how, how, wrong you are, how deceived you are, how misled you are, how fast you're barreling to hell. Go check that out. Go check that out. Let me just, oh, come on, Jesus. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. And this is, you know, this is heavy and this is a lot. And this is not for the straight up lost. The lost don't have a clue. We're getting to a time where everybody's got some kind of clue about the Lord. They will choose to call they will choose to say no you know there's those that will continue to stubbornly refute and doubt and um, to their to their eternal damnation they will the word tells us they will but this is for those who would call themselves the bride that are running around in funeral clothes instead of wedding clothes come on do you hear me this morning do you hear me this morning oh preach Paul or Apollos or whoever. Okay, so you're too dull and sluggish to understand. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. For you should already be professors instructing others by now. Instead, you need to be taught from the beginning the basics of God's prophetic oracles. You're like children still needing milk and not yet ready to digest solid food. And that's by choice. Because he does not, he, he does, he's not a respecter of persons. He's not over here feeding one more than another unless they're coming hungry. Do y'all hear me? Unless they're coming hungry more than another. He answers those who ask, those who seek, those who knock. They're the ones he's opening the door for. That's not a, that's not a favoritism. That's a, you don't want it bad enough to go ask him for it. That's what that is. I want it all. I want all he has for me. I don't want anything this world has. Woo, in the name of Jesus. Mm, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So you're like children still needing milk. And like I said, that is by choice. See, people want to use this to say, well, see, this is, see, the Lord knew. The Lord knew because this is where I'm at. I'm just not ready for that. And not going to get ready if you don't make up your mind to, if you don't set your heart on the things of God, if you don't intentionally crucify that flesh every morning and get in that spirit, um, seek Him. And the, yet again, it all can sum up in that, seek ye first, the kingdom and righteousness of God. Oh, Jesus is doing a thing. He is doing a thing. For every spiritual infant who lives on milk is not yet pierced by the revelation of righteousness. They're not seeking it. They don't want the revelation of righteousness. They want the comfort of sin and the hope of heaven. And they don't mix in the same cup. Your cup needs to be filled and overflowing with the living water of God. Otherwise, it's that old stagnant stuff that he's going to spit out of his mouth. Hello, hello, hello. Wake up, wake up, people, wake up, people. The solid food is for the mature whose spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. They have been adequately trained by what they've experienced to emerge with understanding of the difference between what is truly excellent and what is evil and harmful. Because they're not always just as they appear on the surface level, it goes deeper. It goes deeper. We want to say anything that's fun, anything that makes us laugh and gives us some pleasure in our flesh is good. Almost all of it is horrid, straight from hell. <laughs> but we'll say, oh, well, you know, I mean, look at candy and Halloween. Yeah, here I go again, but I'm not going to dive off deep into it. 
I'm not the expert on that, um, but I have heard several. And I'm going to tell you something. It, if you think there's anything light and happy, and go watch John Ramirez's testimony. Go watch Jenny Weaver's testimony. Go hear the word of the Lord on this matter from those who have been from the dark side to the side, you know, delivered from the darkness into his marvelous light and now are testifying about why you got to say no to this world. And that's a big part of this world. Um, and then candy, I mean, what good does it do us? Rotten teeth, overweight, too much sugar, diabetes, all these things just because it tastes good on the tongue for a few minutes. And that's a whole word for a whole, such a huge diversity of things that we allow and that we indulge in and that we lavish upon ourselves, that we waste our time on, waste our money on, waste our resources on, waste our energy on just for that few moments of something tasting good and then a lifetime of the disease and the darkness and the bondage that it brings. I hope y'all hear me this morning. I hope y'all hear the Lord this morning. Because listen, LaBetha was perfectly happy wallowing around in that junk, but he called me out and I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you did, my God, my King, my everything. Solid foods for the mature, y'all. To be able to understand the difference between what is truly excellent and what is evil and harmful. And what I, I gotta reiterate, and I'm gonna have to go, I gotta reiterate one more time too that you gotta want it. You gotta seek it. It's there, it's available. He's letting you know. And like I said, not too many people still have the excuse of absolute ignorance. I, I dare say if anybody does, unless they're totally isolated somewhere and best believe the word is making its way to the on two before that day comes. But, y'all, I didn't know it was not going to be an excuse. I couldn't. All that, you know, all that, all that. You're denying raised Jesus from the dead and that's not going to hold up in the throne room of heaven. There is more. There is more. We're stopping at Hebrews 6. I've been reading from the Passion Translation. That's probably what we're going to finish out this New Testament with. And then um, I don't know what will be next. Only God knows. I mean, and he whether we even finish out, but I feel like that's where he's led me so far is with the renewing of the mind. Listen, the washing that the water, pure water of the word gives us. We need that constantly. Not every month, not even every week. And here's another thing, and I'm just going to throw this out there. Somebody hear this and seriously contact me. I'm, I'm totally for real. Acts Church, where are you? They met every day. They literally, you know, helped one another, fed one another, um, clothed one another. Um, they knew what being the body meant. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for my tribe to be the Acts Church. Not the Sunday night, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, but that all the time, everywhere we go, um, you know, no schedule because it's just all the time. No schedule because it's all the time. That church, that church. The Lord is raising up that church for these times. It's time to get back to, to really seeking Him first. You know, to reflecting what we say we believe in our lives. So many are not going to read the Bible, no matter how much I get on here and holler about it and preach about it or whatever you want to call what I'm doing. Um, but if they see it happening, if they see it happening in our lives, that's the light that the Lord said to project into their darkness. And they have no choice but to glorify Him. They have no choice but to see the goodness of God. By being, you know, surrender and be that vessel of life that it can shine, that He can shine through. Anyways, 
you know, something to chew on, something to think about this morning. Meaty, meaty, I love it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. He is so flipping good. Yeah, I know. All of a sudden, I got a mirror instead of a camera. Y'all be blessed and encouraged in the Lord. Listen, the time is now. The hour is at hand. The hour is at hand. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. It's time to walk therein. It's time to walk therein. We want these miracles. We, well, the time asking God for a miracle like they saw in the Acts Church. But how often are we laying down our lives like they did in the Acts Church? How often are we that devoted to God like they were? I want to be Lord, and I want you to send the ones that will be with me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All the time. All the time. Stop trying to build up these treasures here. And let's get to building. Let's get to laying up those treasures that will never rust, never tarnish, never fade. Moths won't even be able to touch them. Amen? Let's get there. Let's get about that life, y'all. Building the kingdom of God. So, I love y'all. He loves you absolutely the most, more than anybody ever could. Please taste and see today. I want you to know that for yourself, all the way in and throughout, that it just reverberates, that it just reverberates. You become so bold, you got to tell somebody too. Um, so yeah, Christ be magnified. I'll see y'all next time. Amen.